We want to welcome our visitors. We're glad that you're with us tonight. We want to keep before you the reminder that October 3rd, at the Rollette Church of Christ, there will be a public debate on the subject of marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Uh, one who is very prominent in this area, who is teaching error on that subject, will be confronted with his error, error and uh, be challenged. And it's supposed to be a very uh, orderly and civil debate. And it's going to do much good, I believe, as error is exposed and the truth is made known on this very vital subject. So we need to keep that before us and a reminder of that. We're going to try to announce it uh, up until the time it actually happens. That's October 3rd. It's Saturday. It's going to be from about 8.30 in the morning until about 2 in the afternoon, a one-day event. And we need to support our brethren who are preaching the truth on this subject. This is the last of the series of sermons that I will be speaking in October when I go to Dubuque, Iowa. The last assignment that I have is the assignment of being a watchman. Being a watchman. Of course, that concept is taken from Ezekiel chapter 33. We live in a society that is inundated with danger. There's problems all around us. As a result of that, we have eyes looking everywhere. Surveillance is everywhere. There are cameras, there are sensors, there are infrared cameras, night vision cameras. All of these are watching out for potential danger in certain areas or perhaps at a person's property or a company or a business. So this is watching, this is a surveillance that's taking place watching for danger. Not only that, there are people involved in the watchman business, so to speak. Security officers, those who are hired to watch, to look at perhaps a camera system where you can watch several places at one location. They are to be vigilant. They are to be very watchful, awake, and aware of what's going on because of the dangers that are all around us. But in ancient times, before there were cameras, before there was the use of electricity, you had to have a man as a watchman. The cities were walled. Large cities had walls around them. And on those walls, you would place men who would be the watchmen. They would be looking out over the wall, looking on the horizon to see what was going on. They were trusted men who had a very important task. And in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 6, God, through the prophet Ezekiel, talks about the watchman. And it says in verse 1, Ezekiel 33, Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a watchman from their territory and make him their watchman. They take a man and make him their watchman. Verse 3, When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, that whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning say, will save his life. Verse 6, But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet... The people are not warned. The sword comes and takes any person from among them. He is, a, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Do you see the responsibility there? The awesome responsibility that the watchman had in his task of watching for danger. He could not be distracted. He could not be looking inward into the city. He had to be looking outward. He had to be surveying the area that he was assigned. 
And he had to be vigilant. And he had to see. And if he sees a sword, that represents an enemy, coming upon the city, there were trumpets that they would blow. It would be like a security officer today or someone who had a radio that they could radio in or perhaps call somebody on their cell phone to give a warning. And we see this in various ways in our society. We have storm watchers. When bad storms, supercells come into our area, you have storm watchers who come out who watch the storms and see if there's any danger. And they see the storm uh, having the potential of having damaging winds or perhaps even rotation that indicates a tornado is about to occur. They will call it in and give the warning. So the responsibility of the watchman is that of safety, keeping the city safe. Because when he sees the enemy coming, he blows the horn. And as he blows the horn, gives the warning, if people don't listen, if people don't pay attention to the watchman, that is not his responsibility. His responsibility is to give the warning. He cannot make people listen to that warning. And therefore, when he gives the warning and people come in and people don't take heed to that warning, they will be overtaken by that invading nation. And as a result, their blood will be upon their own head. However, verse 6, if the watchman sees the sword coming and he doesn't blow the horn, the invading nation will come in, but the blood that is shed will be required at the watchman's hand. Because he saw the danger, and he didn't say a word. He did not blow the trumpet. He did not give the warning. He saw the danger coming, but he did not give the warning to the people. Then in verses 7 through 11, we see the spiritual application of this Old Testament parable as it's given to Ezekiel and to all the prophets, and in application to all of us who are the modern-day watchmen of our society. Verses 7 through 11, it says, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them from, or warn them for me. So we see in verse 7 what we talked about this morning in our Bible class that the prophets got their message from God and they spoke forth that word to the people. Verse 8, When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. The wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Look at verse 8. I say to the wicked man, you shall surely die. You're going to be lost. And it's your responsibility to tell that wicked person. They're going to be lost. Their behavior is going to lead to their eternal destruction. Yet, you do not say anything to warn that wicked person. Verse 8. That wicked man is going to die in his sins. But his blood I will require at your hand. You, Ezekiel will be responsible for not giving the warning. You're responsible for giving the warning. But if you don't give the warning, then His blood is going to be required at your hand. Look at verse 9. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. In other words, he's saying the same thing about the physical watchman. He's making a spiritual application to the concept of a watchman. If you do warn the wicked, but he doesn't listen to you, you've done your job. Just like the watchman on the wall when he sees the enemy coming and he blows the trumpet to warn the city, he's done his job. That's all he can do. He cannot make people take heed to the warning. And in the same way, we have to sound the warning forth, but it is not our responsibility for people to take heed to the warning. The wicked will die because they've ignored the warning, but you have delivered your soul because you've done what I've asked you to do. You've done the watchman's work. You have sounded forth 
the warning. Verse 10 and 11. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you shall say, If our transgression, transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Pine away. Some other translations will say waste away. We're wasting away in our sins. How can we live? What is the remedy to this situation? Verse 11 is the remedy. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Do you see God pleading? Do you see God pleading with His people to repent? To turn away from their wickedness? They're saying, we're wasting away in our sins. Well, the solution is, don't remain there. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Repent. You've got to recognize the sin in your life. You've got to renounce it. And you've got to remove yourself from it. And turn back to God. For why will you die, O house of Israel? So we see here in verses 1 through 11, the primary responsibility of the watchman is to watch and to warn. To watch for the danger that's coming and to warn the people concerning that danger. And therefore, we see the spiritual application of it. And this is a comforting thought for Ezekiel. This is a comforting thought for all those who preach and teach the Word of God. Our responsibility is to teach and preach the Word of God. That's what we're responsible for. We're to do it with the right attitude. We're to speak the truth in love. And that's all we're responsible for. We need to understand that it's the power of God's Word that converts people. We're just simply a messenger. We're just sounding forth the warning. We're setting forth that warning just as the watchman does in Ezekiel chapter 33. We're telling people what they have to do. We're seeing the danger on the horizon. We see that judgment day is coming because of the warnings, because of the promise that we find of Christ's return in the New Testament. There is a day of judgment coming. And as we study the prophets, as we're beginning in our Sunday morning Bible class, we see that nations are warned for their wickedness. And so we sound forth that warning as the watchmen of God's people. Warning this nation and others, you better repent. You better turn back to God. Because if you persist in this course, God will humble you. God will bring you down. God will cause you to decline. God will destroy the nations that turn away from Him. So we have this responsibility of taking the message to the world. We're like the sower of Luke chapter 8. The power is not in the sower. The power is in the seed. Luke 8 and verse 11, the seed of the kingdom is the word of God. And therefore we sow the seed. The sower is not the originator of the power to produce the crop. He's just a distributor. And that's what we do. We sow the seed. We distribute it. Because the power, once again, is in God's Word. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Paul says in verse 15, I'm ready to preach the gospel to those of you who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Therefore the power of God to convert the wicked people of this world is found in the scriptures. That's why Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us that God's word is living and powerful, powerful sharper than any two-edged sword. And we understand, when we understand the power of God's word, we will just be the ones preaching it. We will not try to convert people to ourselves. We're not trying to get followers. We're trying to make disciples of all nations, disciples of Christ, by teaching the gospel of Christ. So the watchman's responsibility is to watch and to warn. 
That's why events like this debate is very important. Because men are going to stand up and warn against the false teaching that's going to cause people to lose their soul. The man, Brother Sapp, we need to be praying for him. He's going to be defending the truth concerning marriage, divorce, and remarriage, what the Bible says on that, against the false teacher. And we need to be praying for Brother Sapp that he will have the courage and the wisdom and the love and the concern to preach the truth and stand up against error. He is indeed a watchman. You see, God's word will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent forth. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be... Uh, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, God says. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God's word, when distributed, will always bring results. It always has. And it always will. And therefore, we need to trust God's word and to distribute that word, and to teach all nations, and to teach our friends and our neighbors, and our classmates and our co-workers the truth, not only by the words that we speak, but by the lives that we live. We need to live a sermon every day. Every day we should be living a sermon before our fellow man. Because when we do that, people will see, and people will respond. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 The New Testament tells us that we need to be watchmen as well. The word watchman is not there, but the word watch is. The concept is still the same. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Watch. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. We know that all Christians are to watch, but the responsibility of watching out for the well-being of the congregation lies upon the elders. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. The elders, the overseers, the pastors of the church, they are the ones who watch out for the souls of the congregation that they are overseeing. And so they have a responsibility of being a watchman. That means they need to be very diligent. As elders, they need to be diligent in knowing some of the trends that's going on in the religious world. They need to be aware of who's teaching what. And not just assume... That if you get something in the mail, an advertisement from a church of Christ, that it's automatically sound. That's the problem that we're facing in our society. That too many brethren, as soon as they get a letter or an invitation to some sort of event, and it says Church of Christ on the letterhead or on the envelope, they automatically think, well, it must be okay. And that's just not true. We've got to investigate. We need to see what's being taught. We need to see who's being promoted. Because there are false teachers out there in sheep's clothing, as we talked about this morning. Matthew chapter 7. We need to be watchmen. Our responsibility is to be vigilant, to watch. And when we see the danger, to sound forth the warning. When we do that, we will deliver our own soul. Paul said to the elders of Ephesus in Acts chapter 2, excuse me, Acts chapter 20. He said unto them, I am free from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. I'm free from the blood of all men. I believe that Paul had in mind what we find in Ezekiel chapter 33, the responsibility of being a watchman. I have declared unto you The whole counsel of God. As a watchman, we are telling people that if you do not believe and obey the gospel, 
that you'll be lost. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins, and where I go, you cannot come. So as watchmen, in the sense of being the ones who sound forth the message of hope, the gospel of Christ, we're telling people, you've you got to be warned, you've got to be told that you have to believe and obey the truth in order to be saved. Perhaps there is someone here tonight that needs to obey that truth. Believe in Jesus Christ, confess He's the Son of God, repent of all your sins, and be immersed in water, baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and the Lord will add you to His church. If you've done that, you've gone astray, you're not faithful to the Lord. When you read further down in Ezekiel chapter 33, there's warnings to those who, de- who depart from their righteousness and go into wickedness. And we've got to sound forth that warning to our wayward brethren. Repent and turn back to the Lord. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and while we sing.